Okay, so this video hits really close to my heart because in my opinion, right now, buying a new laptop absolutely sucks. That's because as the owner of a sixth generation ThinkPad X1 Carbon with an eighth gen Intel CPU, I've been looking to upgrade this, buy another laptop for myself, and it's absolutely ridiculous what's happening out there. You have 11th, 12th, 13th gen CPUs being sold right alongside brand new laptops. On the flip side of that coin, you have so many different specs being thrown at your face. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to create a couple of buying guides. Now, this one is sponsored by Lenovo. We are going to be covering their entire new yoga series. So what I've got in front of me right here is four of the most popular ones that they're going to be releasing. There's a couple of others that I don't have. I'm going to talk about those as well. So first of all, there's the Pro 9i, which we've already covered, the 9i 2-in-1, the Pro 7 series, and the Slim 7 series. The Yoga Book is in here since it's in a whole other category of its own. The only one I'm missing is the Yoga 7i 2-in-1, which didn't arrive in time for this video, but I'll still refer to it a few times. And it isn't hard to see where some buyer confusion would enter into this equation too. Since other than the bigger 16 inch Pro 9i, all of these look pretty much the same to most people. They're all 14 inch laptops with their decks and lids made out of aluminum and are available in Luna Gray or Tidal Teal. With only two exceptions though, the 9i 2-in-1's second option is this beautiful cosmic blue, while the Slim 7 series only comes in gray. And of course, as with all things, pricing is probably going to factor into these buying decisions too. And unfortunately, and this is a real pain point for me in any laptop video that we've done, actually nailing down the price of any of these devices is a total pain. And that's because of discounts, regional differences, and all these other things that will factor into the final price that you end up paying. So what I'm going to do here is take an approximate price range for all these, basically your starting at price and what you could basically configure them up to and convert those numbers that I've got from basically across the globe for different configurations into US dollars. Anyways, while there is naturally some overlap in the Yoga Series pricing, you can start to see Lenovo's strategy here. The Pro 9i and Pro 7 series are meant to complement one another, and while there's going to be a little bit of overlap here and there, they're obviously not meant to be cross-shopped. Then the Slim 7 series hits that much more affordable pricing category. The same goes for the 2-in-1s. They might both be convertible laptops, but they're priced very, very differently from one another. So all of these are basically considered thin and light laptops, except maybe that Pro 9i, since it's a 16-inch form factor, but it's still very, very thin. What I really wanted to do here is I wanted to take these out of the office and bring them into their natural habitat. So the reality with these thin and lights is they're not gonna be hooked up to your monitor all day. Most of the time, they're gonna find themselves in a place like this, in a coffee shop, in a class, basically away from chargers. So what you should be looking for is portability, battery life, and visibility of that panel. But that portability aspect is probably the most important because you're gonna be lugging these things around in a backpack. And that's because all the yogas, even the 16 inch Pro 9i are less than five pounds and under 20 millimeters thick. The real standout though is the Yoga 9i 2-in-1, which by comparison to the others is razor thin. Basically though, there's a direct correlation between each yoga's thickness and the amount of performance Lenovo wants it to get. And the nice thing for people who want to save some money is that the least expensive laptop here is also the most portable. And of course, chargers factor into that portability equation too because if you're going on any long distance journey like we typically do you still have to plug in your laptop regardless so Lenovo's kept things very very compact for that as well first of all there's a 65 watt charger that you could just literally put in your pants pocket no matter where you go for the slims and the two-in-ones then for the Pro 7i, you basically have your 100 watt charger, which is a little bit larger, but still extremely compact and light. The Pro series also comes with discrete GPU options. So those get 140 watt chargers. Finally, for the big boy, the Pro 9i, because it comes with it up to an RTX 4070, there is still a extremely slim 170 watt charger. The only difference with this one is that you do not have USB compatibility like you have with all the other ones. Well, all the other ones use USB-C. This has a custom charging port. Okay, so you're all charged up, everything's good to go, but the last thing that you want when you arrive in a coffee shop or anywhere for that matter is playing Hunger Games with a bunch of other people in here, 
not today because, I mean, thank you very much, Cafe Nora, for allowing us to use the whole space, but you need to make sure that you have the best battery life when you just don't have access to power. And look, Lenovo feels your pain. So they've moved the entire Yoga series to 65 watt hour and higher capacity batteries. The two in ones also get a bit of an extra bump since they're laser targeted towards being truly mobile devices before anything else. Whereas others sprinkle in a bit more performance into their portability factor. That leads to every single one of these laptops getting over eight hours of battery life in our standard light load test, which is more than enough to get you through a full day's work. Meanwhile, the 2-in-1s and Slim 7i get to 11 hours and even beyond that point. Anyways, hit them with a higher stress load and those numbers get drastically cut into the sub two hour range. But my guess is there aren't a lot of people running high level rendering tasks at a coffee shop, or maybe I'm wrong. But another thing you have to take into account, especially in a space like this, or if you tend to travel in brightly lit airports, well, that's your screen quality and especially the brightness. And when it comes to yoga series, well, what happens is your screen quality is directly tied to the price of the laptop. At the very least, you're getting a 350 nit IPS screen, while some get a brighter OLED as their base panel. And it goes upwards from there to the Pro 9i's mini LED with its insane 200 nits of peak brightness and 100% DCI P3 color space. But the other thing that we have to talk about is the webcams, because in this generation, Lenovo has stepped things up in a big way for certain models. So what we've done here is we've set up four of the laptops around me. There are four mics talking to me all at the same time, so we get about the same lighting conditions on all of them. So the sensors that we have on them are for the 9i series. The 2-in-1 and the 9i Pro is a 1440p sensor. Then moving on, we have the Pro 7i and the Slim 7i that get a 1080p FHD sensor. Now, here's, here's the interesting thing. Even though we have two pairs of sensors, to me at least, every single one of these pictures looks very, very different. When it comes to microphones, there's two options. One of them is a four array microphone on some of these devices, and the other one is a two array microphone. There's a very, very big difference in both audio quality and noise cancellation because there's actually a lot of noise coming around. Two items which are shared throughout all of these webcams is full IR support, so you get Windows Hello. And not only that is that there is a kill switch on every single one of these, which Lenovo has been known for since the ThinkPads were invented. So here you go. So for me, the most important points of a laptop are the elements that you can experience and touch and feel. So those quality of life things like the keyboard and trackpad. And for me, luckily, Lenovo keeps on taking influence from their ThinkPad X1 Carbon series and sort of distilling it down into the Yoga series for the keyboard at least. Now that keyboard, it is almost identical from one laptop to another when it comes to touch and feel. Now the key travel on most of these is 1.5 millimeters, so you have plenty of travel distance and they don't feel dead as a doornail like you get with a lot of other thin and lights. The big thing that is different is of course the full-size keyboard on the Pro 9i. So now that we've established all the elements of portability for this new Yoga series, let's head back to the office so we can plug them in and discuss how they behave in more of a productivity environment. Okay, so this is a little bit of a window into my reality here at the office. What I need is my laptop plugged into a monitor. I want my Varmillo keyboard and I want my mouse also plugged in. And yes, I'm using a dock right now, but what I want on a typical basis is ports and lots of ports. So this trend right now in the laptop market to eliminate a bunch of ports and only include a couple of USB ports, that it, it's just infuriating me. But luckily, Lenovo is thinking a little bit differently. So the Yoga series actually has a pretty generous port layout, at least by 2024 standards. Every single one of them gets at least a single USB-A and a Thunderbolt 4 enabled USB-C port. Some, like the two 9i's and the Pro 7i, also have a USB-C with 3.2 Gen 2 speeds. And you'll need to take into account that one of those USB-C's also needs to be used for charging, so you are losing one. And I'm gonna say this again until I'm blue in the face, and Ibra said it too, in all of his laptop reviews, the Thunderbolt 4 port is 
critical for anybody who wants to use a high bandwidth dock on today's laptops to use them in a quasi desktop scenario like I'm using right here. Secondary ports, well, they're a little bit more of a mixed bag with the 9i 2-in-1 being the only Yoga without a full-size HDMI 2.1 output due to its slim design. Meanwhile, some come with SD card readers while most don't. And the specs for these, look, I, I know that Typically, it's a bunch of alphabet soup, and we're not really getting away from that with the processors or the GPUs, but Lenovo has really simplified that too. Right off the jump, there's some major commonality right across the entire lineup. They all get at least 16 gigs of memory, so no cut rate, eight gigabyte setups here, and access to 512 gigabyte or one terabyte Gen 4 SSDs. Just watch out though, that one terabyte option can represent a huge price jump on some models. Things do get a little bit more complicated though when it comes to the CPUs and GPUs that are included in the Yoga series. So I wanted to break that down by price product segment. Since the Pro Series targets creators, they get access to the highest level CPU in the lineup, so the Core Ultra 9 185H, whereas the others max out at the Ultra 7 155H. These also happen to be the only Yoga laptops with a discrete GPU option. There's also the Slim 7 Series, but you can think of that as a thinner, lighter, and more affordable version of the Pro 7, though without the possibility of a discrete GPU. And for most people out there, Intel's integrated art graphics will be more than enough for thin and light laptop, and it'll also probably grant you a lot more battery life in the long run too. The two-in-ones are pretty much in a category all on their own, since the focus here is on portability and extended battery life. And to achieve that, the Yoga 7 two-in-one gets access to Intel's ultra-low power U-series processors. I also wanted to do a little bit of a performance comparison across the entire Yoga lineup. And what we have here is something pretty exciting for me at least. This is the first time that we have been able to test multiple laptops of the same series with the exact same processor and integrated graphics. So what we are going to see here is a true apples to apples comparison. So let's add a single laptop here, the Pro 9i, and show its performance range. Basically, the lowest point on these graphs will be the result in the laptop's lowest power setting, whereas the upper point will be their best result in the highest performance mode. So let's add all the other laptops. With its larger footprint and bigger internal heatsinks, Lenovo can afford to feed more juice into the Pro 9i without it overheating, so it gets better results. Meanwhile, thinner, smaller laptops like the Slim 7i and 9i 2-in-1 have their power cut back by just a bit. Again, we don't have the Yoga 7i 2-in-1, but expect its performance to be very similar to the Slim 7i when it's equipped with the Ultra 7 155H. Once the integrated graphics are factored into things, the performance delta actually tightens up a bit. That's because most of these end up maximizing the power available to the integrated ARC graphics engine. Add the discrete card for the Pro 9i or Pro 7i, and I'm sure things would look very different though. So when it comes to performance, there's really not that much to distinguish one Yoga laptop from another provided they're using the exact same processor. And that's big news because it proves that Lenovo isn't really hamstringing their most affordable models. So anyways, I guess that brings us to the end of this video, and I hope that you enjoyed more buyer focused content like this. I'm definitely gonna be doing more of these guides because like I said at the beginning of this video, the whole laptop buying experience is really starting to get me pissed off. But anyways, I'm Mike with Harwood Canucks, and I will see you in the next one. Have a great day.